Lori Flaquer, and I'm here at Focus Forward, and I have a very good friend and um, business associate client here with me, Dean Hires. He is co-founder of Sage Presence, and he is the author of a brand new book, Winning Presence for Business Presenters, that is so phenomenal. Welcome, Dean. I'm so excited to have you here with me. Great to be part of something phenomenal. Well, something phenomenal is what's going on with your company right now. It seems that you are really in explosive mode. I you know, mean, the, the cowboy everything. hat finally makes sense because I feel like I'm riding a Bronco right now, <laughs> and I'm just doing my best to hold on for as long as I can, and it's, it's, uh, it's crazy times. There's a lot happening at once, and the book is, is a sign of a really exciting turn. Well, I know the stages are behind you, so, yeah, you know, exactly. like you're, as you're moving forward. So tell us about this book. This is, mm. I'm really excited about this. Well, it's hard to summarize a book that's 10 years of content to write. It's all of the adventures that began when Pete Makalek and I began uh, training actors after I'd just gotten off the set of a movie, and then it led us into the crazy job of being a spy trainer, teaching acting skills to undercover agents. Mm -hmm. So that led us to realize that the skills from the movie set fit everywhere, so we took them everywhere. And uh, everything that we've done that's led to $2 billion of winning sales pitches that we coached and training leaders to have presence and sales teams and speakers to have presence under pressure, that book is how that gets done. Okay, so now you're telling me what I'm getting out of this is in a way you are a sales training company? I'm going to make you your best under whatever's pressure for you. That might okay. be speaking, that might be sales, that might be leadership, that might be a crucial business conversation. But what happens to people is we can crumble when we get into pressure and we don't bring our best presence to the equation and it's going to happen when it's important to us. So we're at risk of being vulnerable to a presence attack, to a crumbling of our presence whenever it's most important to us. A crumbling of our presence. Mm -hmm. That sounds really scary to me. And it feels, everyone knows the feeling, right? You, you're, you're, you feel yeah. hot, your heart starts beating, yeah. you... you, uh, you Butterflies in the stomach, yeah, and you, you start wish you were to, anywhere else on the planet. It's the feeling of wondering if I'm turning red right now. You know, mm. you feel yourself changing and then you don't know how much it shows and you don't know if you're bringing your winning self to that moment. And you don't want your presence to be downgrading, to rounding it down. Mm. You want presence to round whatever you have to say up. So how do you rally it? How do you rally that presence when you need it? Well, it's an ongoing study of sage presence. It's what we spend all of our time doing. And one of the cool things, because like this is a version of a make or break moment. I feel the pressure of the camera, even though, you know, I, I belong on the other side of the camera. So when I get over here, I feel the pressure. And this is something I'm learning more and more. Just the idea of getting excited about whatever scares you taking it more like a roller coaster ride, being happy in the pressure, that's a big uh, part of the equation that brings your best thoughts and your best ideas and your best attitudes to the equation. But there's a lot of ways to get there. We, we can talk about them in specifics or we can talk about them in general. But I think you have to be able to make a connection with your audience, whether that's you, uh, mm -hmm. my audience, mm -hmm. or you, mm -hmm. my audience. Mm -hmm. I have to be able to see you, I have to be able to reach you somehow. And I gotta find that under pressure. Connection, I have to have a message that makes sense, that will take you where you want to go or where I want you to go. Okay, I so I need a time out here for a second. So I'm gonna look right over here and I'm gonna say the reason why I decided to do this show was because I wanted to be able to be comfortable with this and I wasn't comfortable with this. You and seem I said, pretty How comfortable. How am I gonna do it? Well, I, I, well, this is many shows into it. How am I gonna do it? I'm just gonna get I'm just gonna get to that next side. Yeah. And you know, I wanna tell you, one of the big ways that I've been able to do that is by studying your material for mm. so many years. I mean, I've been studying Sage Presence material for it, it's eight years now. Yeah, we're so. both clients of each other, which is really fun. <laughs> and, and our relationship has allowed us to understand. I've learned so much about business from you. You've learned so much about presence. And I've seen your evolution over time and I've experienced my own. Some of this is the feeling of winning. When you, there's a feeling that goes with being in your, in your best mode emotionally. Now what I used to do was trigger emotions, like think of happy things and get, and have that trigger a happy feeling. 
I've worked at feeling my emotions on command so much that I just remember the feeling itself. And so I can remember the feeling of being on and I, you know, which is, a, it's a little bit of, of happy and it's a little bit of almost mad. It's like, it's like some piss and vinegar mixed with some, some joy. And those two emotions are the winning emotion. And I feel that. And so when I feel that, the right words flow. So you keep tapping that. Yes. But before you can tap that, you have to understand that. And I know that that is in this book. Oh, yes. I know it's in this book. This book is phenomenal. I think anybody, anybody, should read this and do some of these exercises because this is going to help you when you don't know you're going to need it. Yes. Because what you're saying, what I'm hearing you say, is that I've practiced this so much, I can pull it on now, anytime. So anytime you have that like in your bag of tricks, you can you know, yes. tap into emotion, present powerfully. But if you don't start, if you don't use some of these tips in here and you don't oh, start... The worst thing will happen. If you don't start, what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself in that moment and then you're going to try it. And that moment is the last place you want to try something new. You want to be trying the techniques of presence all the time, whenever you can. It can be random. I'm not looking for that permanent awesome state, mm -hmm. you know, nirvana, that's, some, that's somebody else's problem. Mine is when you hit that moment, I want you to have practiced the skills to get there. And people wait too late. They don't take on the chances to practice in the normal things that they're doing. They just have to understand what they are. And I fought my editors because I wanted to remember the, 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 the one time gargantuan chemistry section. Um, <laughs> Chemistry is my presence mixing with your presence. I have my emotions, you have yours, and together we form chemistry. And I wanted to elaborate and explain emotions to the whole world so that you all understood how to work with them because they're a wonderful thing that everyone's hiding from. They're hiding from their most wonderful thing, and I wanted to change that. But, but we've got some really deep but simple concepts in here that help people master their emotions. Because body language, which is communicating as loudly as my words, is not run by my thoughts so much. It's run by my feelings. Mm -hmm. So we talk about a process where we learn to think the thoughts that trigger the right feelings and then let body language be. Let it be free because your feelings will drive that to a wonderful place if you learn how to feel wonderful. And that's my favorite part about the book, although we have the nuts and bolts. We teach you, you know, how to walk and talk, how to stand, how to structure messages. We're going to deal with some of those intellectual questions you have. But the questions of the heart that so many people have been unable to answer, I think we have the answers. And I'm really excited to see this book come into the world and shape the way people think about themselves as they communicate powerfully to the people they want to influence. Well, one of the great things that I notice about this book because I've had presentation training before and you know speech training and all that and mm -hmm. it was very difficult extremely difficult it really focused on what not to do yeah don't that's do the this, worst don't place do that, to focus don't do the other thing so when you got up there you were so nervous and scared yeah. that you were going to make a fatal flaw by yeah, putting don't do this don't do this I'm learning how important that is because I have children and just try helping the kids get better by showing them everything they do wrong. It's not going to work. They get mad. They get scared. They feel defeatist. They feel um, learned helplessness. And what we want to do is affirm the positive to crowd out the negative. Mm -hmm. We don't even deal too much with the things you shouldn't do. Right. Well, that's what I was going to say is your recommendations on what you should do are extremely positive. So yes. people feel like they can actually do it as opposed to focusing on what you shouldn't do and then you're you're all confused and concerned about don't do this don't do that you yeah. can't you can't you couldn't possibly present yourself powerfully yeah. because you're not even in that powerful space. Can I share a story with you? We had a client. This has happened at least can twice. Can I say no? No, I can't. Uh, apparently I'm already <laughs> barreling into it. But um, this we were facing a really big business pitch. It was like nearly $400 million. It was a big one. And there were a bunch of people that had to be great in order to win this job. It was competitive against their best competitors. Mm -hmm. And there was one person who was kind of the central crux of the whole pitch. And this person wasn't the best presenter. And we started doing our practice runs and everybody was getting nervous. And this person could feel everybody doubting him. And he comes up to me 
and my partner Pete, and he says, I've got, you got to make me a superstar in 15 minutes. And what we did is we kind of shifted people on focus on other things and took this guy aside. And we applied the simple skills that this book takes a deep dive into, but we applied them quickly. And in 15 minutes, we went back in to do that presentation. And at the end of the next run of the presentation, the top dog, the people, the guy this was, guy was so worried about says, wow, you're a rock star. So we took a guy to rock star in 15 minutes because we're going to stick to simple things. I don't want something really complicated. Yes, I wrote a book to elaborate and get the understanding deep, but in the end, it better distill down to something simple that I can use when the pressure hits, and it has to be able to work fast. So give us some tips. Give All us right. some tips about exactly, well, here we are, we're facing a make or break moment. What can we do? All right, I'll give you one of the most magical things that I know. It's in the book in, in a great way, but I'll give it to you in the real simple way. Emotions come up and they defeat us by sending the wrong signals out through our body language. So I may be telling you I'm really confident, but my body language is showing me nervous and hesitant. I'm, and I'm basically saying you can't believe me. Don't listen to anything I say because it's not true. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is change that, and I'll give you a, a one-word answer to how, to how to get emotions out of your way forever, and that is the, the, um, an emotion called appreciation. Mm -hmm. Now, there's an activity called appreciating, and then there's this concept appreciation. We've all heard people say, yeah, I, I appreciate your situation, but get back to work. That is so not appreciating. <laughs> appreciating is the activity of seeing who you're really looking at, mm -hmm. really seeing them. And in your mind, you, had, you, I started this by asking, you know, what do I appreciate about Lori? What do I appreciate about Lori? And immediately I see you instead of worrying about me mm -hmm. and my vibe starts to follow that. So if I can appreciate you, I will move my attention over to you instead of cycling back on my own nerves and it will come out with a warm vibe. So same thing to camera. A lot of people get scared looking into camera. It's this big scary lens looking at you and there's a little light above it so I know it's running so I know you're seeing me or going to and that makes me nervous. So I just ask myself, you know, what do I appreciate about that camera? And what comes to mind is cameras allow me to reach you on your time. Because there's a camera there, I can, I can appreciate the fact that someday you're gonna see this tape even though you're not here in the studio with us now. Now, whatever comes to me, it's going to allow me to project myself outward warmly. So the one word answer, appreciation will take the fear and convert it into excitement. And if you don't appreciate, you'll resist that energy and then it will become something negative that'll tax your performance. Okay, so the fabulous answer. Next question. You're in a situation, you have 150 people in the room mm -hmm. and it's almost like they're dead. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you're, you're doomed working, at that point. You know, what do you do? <laughs> you're doomed at that point. Um, <laughs> Come on. Well, one of, one of the first things you do is you let them be what they are. Because we have this idea that, okay, if you're engaged in my material, you're going to be like nodding, mm -hmm. scribbling down notes. But, but watch somebody in a movie that they really love. My kids love Star Wars. And so they were so excited, they couldn't wait for the show to start. And I watched them watching the show that keeps them at the edge of their seats. They were so engaged, you'd never believe it because when you look at them, here's what you see. Sometimes when you're engaged, you shut down. You're so transfixed on what you're watching and listening mm -hmm. to that you don't show anything. Mm -hmm. So the first part of that answer is to let them be how they are because they may be very engaged. I doodle when I'm engaged and I look like I'm not listening. So once you're done letting them be what they are, the other thing you can do is make sure they know that you see them. So we gloss over the audience, we look over their heads, we imagine them in their underwear, yeah. you know, all those stupid things. And what we really need to do is see somebody directly. Talk to one person at a time. And while you're talking to them, make sure that you see that they see that you mm -hmm. see. You know, it, it goes back and forth. And by directing your attention to somebody, they will perk up. You can also Ask the audience questions. People save Q&A to the end. Bring it to the front. So I introduce the topic and I say, why'd you come here? Now, once I engage them, I've created a two-way relationship. Mm -hmm. So those are two simple concepts. There's even more in the book, but just start there. First of all, let them be whatever they are. 
Sometimes they have a scowly look because it's they're taking it seriously. That would be me. I usually yeah. do that. I'm I really want to concentrate on what the person is saying, and I'm exactly. Like this. And and we don't know how to take that yeah. when we're presenting. So I let you be whatever you are. If you're blank, it's because you're totally absorbed in my hanging on my every word. Mm -hmm. If you're scowling, it's because you're taking this really seriously. And we have so many stories of people that that look scowly in the audience, and then they come us up to the end. And they come up to us, and now we think we're going to get in trouble, and they say, that was amazing. So, you know, sometimes it's just people's expression. So let them be what they are and appreciate them for however they're being, and you will bring the vibe to them. Don't expect them to give it to you. Well, you I bring really, it to them. I, I love what you just said because you're taking it away from this blank, staring group of people who it doesn't seem like you, you're, you're making any connection with at all. And now you take and you're dividing them into an individual. Mm -hmm. You say, okay, this is for this individual, this is yeah. for this individual. So right away, you now, it's not like they're invisible, a faceless group. Absolutely. They're now, they're now new friends. And you hit on something that's better than what I said, um, which I is <laughs> t speaking to g going through each person and making them be an individual. Mm -hmm. I learned that in the stories in, in the book, but I was in London in Hyde Park where uh, Tuppence a Bag was running through my head and I was gonna feed the birds. I, was, I had a presentation that night because I was showing a film there. And I threw the bread out and all the birds hoarded on that bread and they started fighting over the bread. And one had a weak wing and didn't get any and I felt sad for him. And I was like, that didn't work at all when I just blurted it all out to the audience. So I got another bag of food and I tossed one breadcrumb way over there and the next one over there and then one in front and then one over there, one up close, one far away. And the audience of birds spread out. And then they all kind of sat up looking Chirp, 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 waiting for the next piece. And I could, there's one for you, there's one for you, there's one for you who didn't get any last time. And I worked the crowd and I was just feeding the birds and it hit me. <laughs> That's how you do a presentation. That is how you bring eye contact and engagement to one person at a time to win the whole audience over in time. Well, that's amazing. That's amazing. It's like these messages come in our daily lives and sometimes. We totally yeah. miss it, but there it is. It's Everything is exactly. a metaphor for something. Exactly. I love that idea that, that as I pay attention to what's going on in the world around me, I'm going to see things that might cue ideas. And you never know where the next vision or business model or training opportunity is going to come through from. I got it from a bunch of birds. So now I have a question about the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the best way to use and maximize the information in this book? Let me give you two answers. The first answer is any way you can. You know, okay. I think the problem, as you pointed out, is too many people just don't get to it. Just use it any, any way you can. One person that I'm uh, that I, I just got feedback from has been reading it carefully, chapter by chapter, going in order. They read a section, they apply it to their life. Mm -hmm. They read it a section, they try that on the next presentation, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I, another person that I talked to is reading it. He, he said, it's kind of funny. He says, well, I read it like the Bible. And I'm like, what exactly does that mean? <laughs> um, and what he does is he has it um, on his counter. And every day he just picks it up, fans to a section, mm -hmm. reads a little bit, closes mm -hmm. it. And he likes the small nuggets randomly, and he's trying them out. And he says, I'm not sure if I'll know when I finish the book. I'm sure I've read most of it. Mm -hmm. But he's reading it randomly back and forth, little bits at a time. Um, so get through the material at whatever pace, but don't, don't pass up the chance to read it. Then if you want to grow that knowledge, we've built a bunch of things to add value. So if you read the book, we have a kit that's an, it's got an action guide to help you plan out your day-to-day -day activities to incorporate this stuff. There's a DVD of a keynote speech that's about that content, mm -hmm. and, and I'm modeling the stuff mm -hmm. that's in it. There's an audio CD for emergencies. It's the emergency kit that you can troubleshoot with. I love that. There's one for, um, there's another audio CD in there that's all about just, it's tips from the set and it's sort of the simple ideas, um, just sort of something to listen to as a reminder on your way to a presentation. 
And uh, is there's... That some, is that the tips from the set? Is that something like if you were going to be shooting a film, maybe something that you would be telling an actor on a... It, would, it started there. What it okay. really is is now for you in your business mm -hmm. world. It's for you as a presenter and as a communicator. But it comes from the things that I basically learned on the set. The things that were always consistent, no matter what method of acting you learn, no matter what situation we're in, certain number of things are consistent. And I'm relating those to business presenting. So you can get the book, and if you want to extend that value, you can get the kit that adapts all of this to your life. And we've even made custom versions of, of kits. We have a professional winning presence for professional women. We have winning, profession, winning presence for networking. And coming down the pipe is winning presence for sales and winning presence for leadership. So we're working on all these things. But right now, I believe the book, the primary kit, and the professional women kit and the networking kit, they're all ready. They're, they're all going to uh, release along with the book on November 1st. So those kits each relate to the book? They take this, this is the core material. Okay. They extend that core material to other mm -hmm. topics. So mm -hmm. there are some special situations that business women face that are exclusive to them. In, in a lot of ways, people are people, but, but we've done so much work with professional women uh, and rising leaders and women who are trapped under the glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. What we've done is, is extend these same chapters specifically into that audience to bring special insight for professional women. Uh, networking is one make or break moment of many that a lot of people have to deal with. You never stop networking, right. and a lot of people never quite like it. And so Pete wrote and created that kit um, to adapt the book content into that particular challenge of networking, which you care about if you're building business, you care about if you're hunting for a job, you care about if you're networking within a big company and building your relationships mm -hmm. within, when don't you care about building a better network? Because we live in a world that changes sometimes. Change is inevitable and, and networking helps you be ready for change. Wow, that's, that's incredible. So um, when we look at this, I, I know I started out the show by saying that your company is having really explosive growth and the things that you're doing. What else do you have in your pipeline? Oh my gosh, well right now I'm, I'm sort of in this really focused zone because I'm releasing more and more of my responsibilities of like the day-to-day minutiae, mm -hmm. turning it over to the team, mm -hmm. and then I'm getting sent everywhere. So, so my, for myself, I'm in a shift to more of a spokesperson speaker for the company. Okay. I was just out in San Diego uh, creating training video, well, they would be um, publicity videos for the book that dovetail with a product that my former business par partner, Mike Koenigs, he's the traffic geyser mm -hmm. guy, he's doing a big rollout and it's a product called uh, author expert marketing machines. It's tools for authors. And I'm a case study for him. So I'm doing videos and, and getting some exposure. I have to go back in a couple of weeks to be on a webinar that's, I mean, this is a massively attended webinar. There's gonna be thousands of people watching this live webinar. And then I'm going out with somebody, somebody you, uh, <laughs> to New York uh, in a couple of weeks. We're going to the National Publicity Summit. It, it's one of the most fun and unnerving experiences I know because you learn about pitching to the public, to press. How do you get on the radio? How do you get on TV? How do you get in magazines? And then you go and pitch all these people. So, you know. CBS, NBC, you know, Regis, uh, I don't know, I don't know who's the new, who's the new Oprah? What, you know, I mean, all of these, these big national shows, radio shows, magazines are going to be there. And then I'm going to walk up and pitch them. Hi, uh, my name's Dean. I am a filmmaker turned spy trainer and I'm going to reveal winning presence. And they're going to be like, huh? You know, you have to win people over in this. No, they're really, going to be like, "Tell no, me more," because well, we've we've already been down. Yeah, we road we've done this before. Great. We did this once before, but as you recall, I didn't have a book, so I didn't have I I teed them up, but I couldn't hit them off. Mm -hmm. And so now we're going back in force, um, ready to knock those out of the park. So for me, there's a lot of publicity going on, and an endless. Um, uh, it seems like an endless quest for radio, TV. Um, magazines, articles, and I'm going to try to be the PR engine for the company while I continue to coach and train and, and work on other books. I mean, it's kind of a crazy, 
Well, it's great. It's great. I mean, it's just we're just moving and grooving and making things happen. I have That's a question fun. for you. Tell me about the book launch party. The book launch party. Well, I can't wait to experience it myself. <laughs> I've heard a lot about it. Um, the main things I know, it's November 1st, which is a Thursday, I believe. It's in the evening, and it is at Cinequip. What we decided to do is, instead of having the book launch party at some fancy restaurant, something like that, hey, let's put it on the film set. And Cinequip Studios, they're in North Minneapolis, uh, pretty near downtown uh, Minneapolis. And we are going to have the big gala event. We're, we're going to have helicopter rides and, <laughs> and uh, launch rockets and fireworks and all the searchlights <laughs> and the red carpet. I don't know. I, it's going to be a big event. But the point is we're going to unveil all of the above. It's going to be the party that lets us present the new expansive sage presence. And it's going to release the book officially. And we have the goal of selling enough books on November 1st, either at the party or over the internet on Amazon.com, that we can hit a bestseller, Amazon bestseller rating, which is a, an achievement. It's a hard thing to go for, but we think we can do it. And so we're really building everyone around that date and uh, trying to see if we can start changing the world that night. Wow, that sounds fabulous, fabulous. And then tell me a little bit about the train the trainer. Just, to, just give me. Well, a and this bit. is really this. This was in a lot of ways um, your brainchild. You told us about a year ago or more. It's time that you start replicating this. Mm -hmm. And so my partner Pete Macleck and I, we've been like piano tuners, running around the world tuning every piano we can find. And there gets a point that you just can't handle it anymore. There's so much work and there's so many companies, there's so many people. So we teamed up with Carrie Metkowski, um, who is a train the trainer builder. And Carrie and you and Pete and I and, and Robert Dempsey from Dempsey Marketing, we're all kind of collaborating to figure out how to get the pieces to come together. But here it is in a nutshell. We're looking for new sages. If people want to be joining our team, we've finally built the train the trainer model that will let us coach other people to do what we do. It's been locked in us for too long. So the book is one version of that outreach. Train the trainer is another. Well, we're going to have so. to have you come back and talk about that next time yeah. because we have run out of time. Awesome. Well, we sure it seems like two minutes. It seems like. That. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Dean, thanks so much for coming. Always. Phenomenal book. Please do yourself a favor. Get this book. You're going to love it. It's phenomenal. And again, the name is Winning Presents for Business Presenters. Thanks so much, Dean. I appreciate mm. it. You're going to have to come back soon. Count me in. Hey there, this is Robert Dempsey with your tips from the net. And today I want to briefly go over trifecta marketing. And what that means is this, is that there are three types of marketing that you need to combine into a strategy and implement. And those three are number one, passive marketing, number two, active marketing, and number three is proactive. So quick example of passive marketing would be things like SEO. And what I mean by this is that you do an activity and then you kind of sit back and wait for it to come into effect, to really take effect. Now, SEO is not necessarily something you just wait to happen, but if you publish a blog post, you get a share in the social media, you move on to the next one. So SEO definitely under the passive, uh, passive marketing uh, umbrella, if you will. So number two is active. And what I mean by active marketing is things like actively building your social media community. So using a tool for Twitter like uh, Communit, which is C-O-M-M-U-N dot I-T, to say, hey, you know, thanks for being a supporter, thanks for being an influencer, and also figuring out, helping to figure out who your prospects are on Twitter. So using tools being active and engaging on their social networks each day. That's one example. And then finally, proactive is one of my favorites. And in here, we have a concept called the Dream 100, which was created by a guy named Chet Holmes. And what that means is this. 
you write a list of the top 100 companies that you want to work for. Now these could be companies actually, or affiliates, or referral partners, you know, it depends on your business model. But either way, you write down the top 100, or 50, or 25, you create a long-term communication strategy, so we're talking anywhere from nine to 12 months, that will send something, you'll send something to these folks every two weeks without fail until basically they give in and you get a meeting with them. So that's the concept of a called Dream 100 effort. So that's it. Combine the three, passive, active, and proactive in a marketing strategy, make it 12 months, and run with it. I'm Robert Dempsey, and I will see you for the next tips.